Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Gaming On Board. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Oregon Trail, the journey to Willamette Valley. Uh, it's much better than this pile of uh, hot garbage right here. Don't even try it. Turn one, you're dead. There you go. That's the whole game. But anyways, uh, this one actually has a board and a bunch of little pieces. You can buy and sell things. Much better. Really gives the feel of the old computer game. Crossing the river is a pain in the butt. So let's go down to the table. I'll show you what it looks like and how to play. And I'll give you a few more of my thoughts. All right. So this is the Oregon Trail Journey to Willamette Valley. All set up, ready to play. The first thing you're going to do is get these tiles out. Shuffle them up. Put out your two oxen and wagon extension upgrades. Put out the market cards. Shuffle them up. Flip the top one over. Shuffle up your calamity cards. Shuffle up your hunting cards. Have a space for a discard of both of those. Get all your large and small resources set up. Flip the top two tiles over. Set them anywhere on the board. If it's a two-player game, if it's a three-player, it'll be three tiles. Four-player, it'll be four tiles. But we have a two-player game set up now. After we did that, we gave each player two starting tiles, equal to the number of oxens they have. By default, you always have two. So we both have two tiles. We both have $300. The game comes with five, one, and 50. So 500, 150 tokens. Um, we gave each player four family members, and they are all set to five health. And we also gave each player a pistol, which is the small gray, and two meat. So there we go. We got everything set up. Um, each of the, you know, the, the player board will tell you exactly what you're supposed to do on your turn at the start of it, in the middle of it, and at the end of it. And that's it. That's the setup. We're ready to go. This tile in particular I need to talk about. This is a town. You can tell because it has a dollar symbol in the house. And it's got a gray square and a brown square. So that means we're going to grab a gray square and a brown square, which happens to be spare parts and a shotgun. So those can be purchased there. Once they're purchased, they're gone. So get them while you can. All right, so at the beginning of a player's turn, they will look at the tiles in their hand and place at least one of them. They can play as many as they want, but they have to place at least one. So rivers are a pain to cross, and the higher the number on the river, the more difficult it is to cross. So I think this player is going to hang on to this and go ahead and, and play the five because you have to. Um, and they'll put it right there, just to make it even worse. <laughs> then after that, if you are not on the starting space, and you are not in a fort, which a fort, let me see if I can find one real quick, will have this plus symbol and a tower. And this is where you can purchase uh, small items. So if you're not at the starting space or fort, then you would have to draw a Calamity card, which 80% of the time is bad. But anyways, we're at the beginning, so no Calamity for us. Next, you would take three actions. And your options are move, hunt, buy, sell, or pick up a hitchhiker. So I think purple will move here. And then they'll buy a shotgun. Because shotguns really help with hunting, which I'll show you. So she pays 200 bucks, grabs a shotgun, puts it here on the player board. And it's important to know the player board has uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six big squares. Each square holds one large item, one family member, or four small items. So right now this one's halfway full, and these five are occupied. So that was two actions, move, buy, and then... She has the choice to, let's see, you can't sell anything at a fort. You can only sell at towns. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't sell at uh, forts, but you can sell at towns. And I am out of town. So if she wanted, she could sell 
some food for the current market price. For the market price, you look at the face-up card of the market price deck. And right now, food is worth $300. So I think that's a pretty good pay. I, I bought a shotgun for $200. I'll sell some food, make 100 bucks on it, and I'll still have food to feed my family at the end of my turn. So for action number three, we're going to sell this food, grab 300 bucks, and now we have 300 bucks and a shotgun. Then at the end of your turn, if you have any unresolved calamities, bad stuff happens, then you have to feed your family. To feed your family, you spend one red cube. That's food, and that'll feed your entire family, plus any hitchhikers that you might have. Then, if you sold something, which we did, you would refresh the market card by just taking the one that you used, putting it on the bottom of the deck face up, and flipping the next one. So now, food is still worth 300 bucks, but some of these other prices may have changed. But that only happens if you sell something on your turn. Alright, so then it goes over to the red player. Same deal. Look at the tiles. Oh, we got to play one of them. So let's play this here so it's easier for him to move around. Um, you don't have to go through those huge rivers. If you see a tile with a forest on it, that means you can hunt there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just so you can see how hunting works. Uh, oh, I missed one thing. So after you play at least one tile, you draw back up to the number of oxen you have. So that means uh, the first player should have drawn one to go back up to two and now the second player will draw another one to go back up to two all right so uh, i don't have to draw a calamity card because i'm at the starting space so one movement puts me here from the starting space you can go to any tile in the first column um, but from then on it has to be orthogonally adjacent no uh, diagonal movement it's either uh, above below left or right so anyway, one is move two is going to be hunt so the way hunting works is, you take whatever weapons you have. In this case, I only have a pistol. But for this example, I'm going to pretend that I also have a shotgun. So I can show you how this works. Um, you take whatever weapons you have, and you could have two shotguns and two pistols. Who knows? Um, but you'll take these, and for the pistol, you'll place it on the number that you think is going to come out of the hunting deck. So... There is an abundance of fours and threes in the deck, so I'm going to put this on a four. Fours, there's eight fours, seven threes, four twos, two ones, one six, something like that. But fours and threes are a pretty good bet. Um, I think there's only one six, but anyway, the higher the number, the more you get. So I put the pistol on the four. I put the shotgun in between on the target, uh, in between five and six, which means if it's a five or a six, I'm successful at hunting. So... If it's a four, or five, or six, I'm successful at hunting. But there's a little bit more to it. So the other player, the player to your left, um, is supposed to draw it before you make your decision. So they draw it, and they keep it a secret. They're like, oh, okay. And then you, you can kind of judge them, uh, like their reaction. So they got to have like a poker face. They don't tell you the number. They don't tell you the animal. No hints, no nothing. But we all know what's already in the discard pile. Right now, there's nothing in the discard pile, so I'm just going based on statistics. But if there was seven squirrels in the discard pile, there's only one left in the deck. But anyways, you can kind of try to judge their reaction and make a decision based on that. So anyways, I chose four, five, and six with my shotgun. Complete miss. So they reveal that. I see that I got nothing. But if I would have chosen two, I would have got three meat. So that would have been nice. So then uh, my shotgun goes back in my uh, back in my cart. My pistol goes back in my cart. Uh, you can never lose your last pistol, so you will always have at least one pistol. Um, but you can lose your other guns. But it's cool that they go back. I thought it was going to be something like you use it once and it's gone. But that's not the case. So anyways, um, I could... Go right over here on this side of the river, and but I still have to cross that one unless I connect a road here in a future turn. Um, but anyways, I think I'm gonna hunt again because I got. Well, I don't have that shotgun. That's right. I was just using that for that uh, example. So anyway, I'm gonna hunt again, 
and I'm just going to say four this time because I know there's a bunch of those freaking squirrels in there. And it is a squirrel. Four. So I, I hit it. I got the squirrel. I get my one food for the squirrel. And that's my third action. Now I have to feed my family. One cube. Because I didn't have any calamities to resolve because I started on the starting space. I didn't sell anything so the market prices stay the same. Goes back over to player one. So I'm going to do some stuff here just so you can see all the different examples of uh, what happens in the game. So let's just say I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Well, at the beginning of my turn, I have to lay out a tile. And I just want to get this crap out of my hand, honestly. So I'm going to put one there, one there. And man, that really sucks for the red player because he's surrounded by a river. And then I'll draw two tiles to get me back up to my two oxen number. Uh, that's cool. I got a fort um, and a hunting ground. Uh, then I draw a calamity card because I am not in a fort. And it is extreme cold. Family member dies. I can avoid by spending winter clothes or reaching a fort this turn. Unfortunately, there's no forts out. And there's no winter clothes available. So I'll just leave that right there as a reminder. And if I don't do that, a family member dies. Which is fortunate because I need to show you that. Anyway, first action. Move. I'm on this side of the tile. And I have a choice now. I can either uh, roll this die. And hopefully roll a six. And then I will have crossed the river successfully. And that's not one of my actions that's a free thing a free action to cross the river or i can go ahead and put my wagon on the other side of the river and then forfeit the rest of my actions for this turn so just for example sake i'm going to roll and i rolled a five so five is one away from six so i have to distribute one damage amongst all of my family members so take this guy down to four so if i had rolled a one I'd have to distribute five damage amongst my family members, however I see fit. But the good thing is I'm on the other side of the river and I still have two actions. And there's not a whole lot to do. So a second action will be to move here and the third will be to hunt. She's got a shotgun, so she'll put the pistol on the four and the shotgun between one and two. So if it's a one, two, or a four, I'm good. It's a four. Awesome. I need that to feed my family because I have no food. And that's the end of her turn. She resolves this, which really sucks this early in the game, and I'm about to tell you why. So a family member dies. Let's get rid of the one that's already taken some damage. So you'll flip this over to the tombstone side, and you'll place it on the tile where it died. Now, what really sucks about this is, I'm going to zoom in and show you why. You see these numbers. You lose uh, money, which money in this game is victory points. So wherever that family member died, you lose that much money at the end of the game. So this one died on the very first column, which is $600. So it's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's not good. Whoop. All right. So, yeah, you don't want your family members dying, and you definitely don't want them dying this early on. It's not good. So, um, and anyways, we resolve that calamity. I'm going to feed the family. Remember, one feeds the whole family. Didn't sell anything. We don't refresh the market cards. And uh, back to Red's turn. So, we talked about family members dying, how that's important, crossing rivers, purchasing stuff. Um, the forts. I don't have any forts. Let's just say I had this fort. Um, I'll put it right here. Um, roads are also important. I'm going to fast forward the game a little bit here. So if we had a road going there, road there. If you can connect these roads, it's not very easy. But it can be a huge payoff when you make it happen. Okay, so... Now we're further along in the game. Let's just say red made it to the other side of that river and uh, purple was in this fort right here, okay? So it's purple's turn. Uh, purple 
is going to oh yeah so whenever these forts come out you put these tiny little uh, resources out here and these are important to talk about so there's four different types of small resources you've already seen the pistol and the food and then there's also the yellow or orangish color which is a compass and what the compass does is if you have a compass you can discard your compass and the player to your left has to show you the hunting card before you place your weapons. So it's really good. I mean, it could really pay off. I think there's one uh, animal that gives you like five or six meat. So you can use your compass, see what it is, and hit it immediately. And then the medicine, like I said, lets you avoid calamities like, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Dysentery. <laughs> so, and there's a lot of stuff in here from the, uh, from the, computer game so there's the uh, items that I didn't talk about um, winter clothes like I told you hitchhikers are worth 400 points at the end of the game spare parts are used to avoid calamities like a broken wheel stuff like that and then winter clothes uh, make it so that you don't take any damage when you go through winter tiles which I'm about to talk about so these ones with snow on them are winter tiles and they are very dangerous. So, say it's Purple's turn. She wants to move. And luckily, she has a road connected all the way to this side. So, for one movement point, she can move from here along the road. Boom. All the way there. But, there's a problem. <laughs> she does not have any winter clothes. So, for each winter tile you move through... Uh, with no winter clothes, every single family member takes one damage. And if you had any hitchhikers, they immediately die. Hitchhikers only have one point of health. So as soon as they take any damage whatsoever, they're dead. So all of these family members go down to four life. So that was a rough one, but she made it a long way. And why that is important is uh, the first person to reach Willamette Valley triggers the end of the game, and then you f uh, finish the rest of that round. So in a two-player game, Red was the second player. If Red reached there first, that would immediately end the game. No more actions for anybody. And then however many columns you are away from Willamette Valley, you lose that much money. So if Purple was way back here and Red made it to the end, that'd be one, two, three, four, five hundred dollars she's losing, plus six hundred for a family member dying on the first mile of the trip or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the whole game. The only thing I didn't mention is um, at, uh, where is it? Is it at Towns? Yeah, so at Forts. Like I said, if you start your turn on a Fort, you don't draw a Calamity card, first of all. And at Forts, in addition to being able to buy these small uh, supplies, you can also buy these upgrades. So you can add a wagon extension, which will add four more slots for you to store stuff. It's really useful. Um, and then an additional oxen, or additional ox. So you'll be drawing more tiles and having more manipulation over how the board goes. So it's so much better than that crappy card game they did. Uh, I don't think it was the same company, but when I say they, I mean, you know, the game developers, uh, companies, and stuff like that. So I just want to show you some of these um, Calamity cards, because if you've got some nostalgia going into this game, you'll probably like this. So spare part, you get a spare part. Dysentery. You can fix it by getting to a fort or spending some medicine. Uh, gun malfunction. Lose a pistol or a shotgun, but little notice, cannot lose last gun. Uh, family member dies, avoid by spending a hundred dollars or reaching, <laughs> or reaching the fort. So some bandits just straight up said, "Give me a hundred bucks, or I'm gonna kill your family member." Uh, you got a broken wheel. You can use some spare parts or get to a town to fix it. You got dehydration. You can land on a river tile. Very cool. Or make it to a town. You know, it's all really good and thematic. It's it's really cool. Uh, typhoid medicine. Coffee, you get an extra action. You're all hopped up on some caffeine. Rocks, you lose an action. Rough terrain. Oh, look, you get a wagon extension for free. 
uh, additional ox dies. You can't lose one of your starting two oxens. It has to be a third. Oh, look, you get an oxen for free. Free medicine. Dysentery, broken wheel. Uh, sabotage. Wagon extension gets destroyed. Get a hundred bucks. You get lost. You can fix it by using a compass. Very cool. Um, found a barrel of food sitting on the side of the road. Maybe it was a maybe it was one of your dead ox. I feel like if if one of your ox dies, you should get like two meat. But anyways, uh, you can't use the roads because they're frozen. You can't hunt. Uh, you get a broken leg, minus one health, unavoidable. So yeah, some of these are just straight up unavoidable. There's nothing you can do. Family member dies of starvation. So you get the idea. Very cool. Um, I've only played it two player so far, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, so then at the end of the game, you get 500 bucks for your driver. So you're getting 500 bucks no, no matter what everybody is. Uh, you add 100 points per family member health. So in this case, it would be 400, 800, 1,200. Uh, you would subtract 100 per column away, like I said. And then you subtract the amount shown at the bottom of each column where you had a family member die, like I said. Player with the most money in the game wins the game. So yeah, that is the Oregon Trail, Journey to Willamette Valley. Uh, much better than a card game. Highly recommend it. I got this one at Target only because Cape Fear Games didn't have it. And I don't even know if they could have ordered it, honestly. It was like an impulse buy. There was, we had a coupon. and Anyway, you understand. You see a game, you're like, <gasps> got to get it. So yeah, definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Check out all of our old videos. We have close to 200, maybe over 200 now. I'm not sure. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and play all the games.